Don't stop now because this is a time like no other. Keep it going peacefully and lovingly and purposefully. Some people are treating us blacks differently just because of our skin color. Don't miss this movement. Don't let this time pass you by. I, I don't know if we'll get another chance. This is a movement that can't stop until it accomplishes its purpose. Our country is at a major turning point. This pandemic shut America down and shut America up just long enough to hear the cries and see the pain of its black citizens. It's an extraordinary time where white people all over the world woke up. They woke up to their privilege and their complicity. They woke up to the fact that silence is no longer an option. I believe white people's eyes were open to the truth. The truth that they must be on the side of all humanity. The whole country sat in their home without the distraction of sports or school concerts, going out to dine, you know, normal life. They sat in their homes and they watched for eight minutes and 46 seconds. A man by the name of George Floyd died. They saw a black man say, sir, I can't breathe. And even though we have seen this before with our cell phones, cameras, we've heard those same words before, I can't breathe. This time it was different. Maybe because we were in real time as we watched this man being murdered. And the murderer was so arrogant that he had his hand in his pocket, his knee on the neck of Mr. Floyd, looking straight in the camera, so sure that he lived in a society that would let him get away with this. But he was wrong. Because the people in this country broke down and weeped when they saw that. And when they got up, they were angry. America said enough is enough. I think now White America realizes that black lives matter doesn't mean white lives don't. America said, enough is enough. On a Sunday morning, I had my granddaughter as we were listening to our pastor preach and he had gotten on the floor with his hands behind his back. I had her lay down on the floor with her hands behind her back so that she could imagine what it was like to be Mr. Floyd. She 
She wept when she got up. I seen what he was doing well, when he first started. And then I was kind of like, maybe I should take this time to like see what it was actually like for him to lay on the ground for eight minutes and 46 seconds. So, and the fact that my grandmother encouraged me to do it. Um, so I got down and when I got down, automatically like my grandmother, she was like, imagine this. And she put her, the slipper on my neck and pushed down. And it wasn't, it was for a quick second. But like, I can't even imagine like how he felt for that for eight minutes and 46 seconds. Like, it's crazy. Like, I felt like I was uncomfortable. I didn't like sitting in that. I didn't like laying like that for that long. It was crazy. And a whole mix of emotions was just running through my brain at one time. It was just like, I didn't even know how to feel, but sad, like I was crying while I was laying there watching the screen. It's just, it's kind of sad to see all of this going on, like all the racism throughout different states. And just like seeing it, like I've seen it like back, in, or I've read about it for back in the day and all this stuff, but like I never thought it would actually come to a point where I would be living in that type of time. And it's just different than like what I'm used to seeing or like different from what I'm used to feeling, different from like everything I'm used to. And I hope soon we can put it into it because it actually is like it's hurting some of us you know it's personally I've been getting like upset and angry because nobody that we all should be treated equally nobody should be treated differently just because their skin color and I feel like that's not up to us whether we're white or black so it honestly just upsets me that some some people are treating us blacks differently just because our skin color. Kill, killing black men, they're not doing anything, you know? Like, it's, it's frustrating and irritating, and I just, it makes me feel angry. Honestly, I just think it was the fact of how he was being treated. Like, nobody should ever be treated like that, and to see that he was a black man just made it all worse. It's just, it was heartbreaking to me to see that this man died with a white man's knee on his neck. When they heard George Floyd say, I can't breathe, I think they realized that Systemic racism makes it real hard for democracy to breathe in this country. They, under, they understand finally the pain and the anger that we as black Americans, what we feel when we hear and see white people honor and praise and flaunt the imperialistic and confederate symbols of flags and monuments and people and a time that we were considered three-fourths of a human being. White protesters all over this country and in many places in the world outnumbered the people of color. And I think they were finally saying, we get it. <laughs> my fellow protesters, my brothers and sisters who are out there in the streets, don't stop now. Don't stop now because this is a time like no other. Keep it going peacefully and lovingly and 
purposefully. Because in such a time as this, we can make this one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all.